Hello fellow crafters, Janine here, and today I am doing color swatches of my brand new palette of watercolor paints. In the last video, I showed you how I set up this palette, and let me tell you something that was really funny. When I, I filmed that, after it was all over with, I realized, wait a minute, where's my cadmium red? I had not, when I filled up the palette with these other paints, I hadn't put the cad red in, which I just did, so it is actually still soft. Um, so it has to go through the drying period, but all the other paints are dry to the touch. So what I'm gonna do, um, uh, while I'm explaining how I set up my, uh, my color chart here, I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz all of these with just a tiny little bit of water just to um, get the color flowing a little bit and I'm not going to do that, well actually I'm just going to spritz just a tiny water with the cad red since it's already uh, uh, wet so anyway so that's going to get those started activating while I talk about what I've got going on here and I apologize if you can't see it that well. I tried to make my lines dark enough where you could see them um, pretty well. But let's go ahead and talk about it. I've got two different charts here. I've got, it's labeled dry and wet. And so what I'm gonna be doing with the paints is just wetting them a little bit on the palette, just enough to get, the, the, get them flowing. And then I'm gonna put them on dry paper on this set of swatches. On this set of swatches, I'm going to wet the paper first and then put wet paint on wet paper. And I've got uh, 15 colors, but as you can see, I've got empty spaces on the chart. And that's because my palette, you can see, has empty wells here. So there is that possibility that I will be expanding the palette in the future. So this gives me a place to um, add uh, those colors as I add them to the palette. And so I just made uh, little charts of one and a half inch squares. Um, just used this ruler here to measure that out. I really like this ruler. It's actually, I think, a, for uh, sewing, it's a seamstress ruler. But what I like about it is that it has the marks on both sides. So it makes it so I can make the mark here and make the mark here. Then I've got two marks to line the ruler up with and get a really nice straight line. So I use that ruler. And then this is, um, watercolor paper that was recommended to me by Lindsay Wyrick, the Frugal Crafter. This is Fabriano Studio Paper 140 pound hot press paper. And I've got two um, jars of water here and a third one in reserve in, in case I need it. Uh, and also my spritzer bottle uh, to get things wet if I need to get them wet which it looks like I might need to do spritz a little bit more water in my watercolors. Get those flowing. Uh, oh, and I also have a towel on hand, uh, just an old towel, to wipe my brush off in between swatches to make sure there's no color transferring from one thing to another. So I'm going to go ahead and get my brush wet and dab off the excess and I'm going to go ahead and wet my first square and I'm going to go in here and pick up a little bit of the cad red. Rinse my brush off. Wow, these paints are amazing. I get pick up some water. What I was hoping to do was kind of start with a deeper color at the top and then fade it down as I went down, but that's not quite working out the way I had hoped. Got 
gosh, I can't get over the pigmentation of that. And that's just using the tiniest little bit of paint. All right, so I've got this one drawer that I'm rinsing in, but then I've got a second drawer is where I'm picking up fresh, clean water to wet my paper with. And I forgot to mention, um, I made one and a half inch squares, but then you can see I just went in and drew a straight line across the top of each of them to leave me a space to write the uh, name of each color. And since this is about as much fun as watching paint dry, ha ha ha, pun intended, I'm going to fast forward through this process. I think I'm going to have to jump around doing the wet on wet uh, to keep my colors from mixing together. Now I'm finished putting the color down on the color chart and the wet on wet and uh, I tell you what I can see why Lindsay recommends uh, particularly for a beginner to to dry your paints out in your palette first because I have a tendency to draw I'm noticing um, just in this little exercise that I'm having a tendency to draw too much paint um, onto my paintbrush and then applying it to the paper so um, I had a, a lot of difficulty um, with the cad red which is the only paint on my palette that's still wet fresh out of the tube at this time because um, I can see where I'm having a tendency to just get too much paint onto my brush and if they were all moist paints um, you know like fresh out of the tube I could see that where that would be very problematic so them being dry on the palette is helping me to get a little bit more control and let me tell you what I can see why she recommends professional paints. Oh my goodness, the brightness and depth of the color with these paints, um, which if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I've been using primarily these Ganzai Tambi paints, and, uh, and they're good. I mean, they're nice, bright paints, but I can tell you I have not gotten the color out of these Kiritaki paints that I've gotten out of these Turner paints. The pigmentation and depth of color with these turners is unbelievable and, and the way they just uh, they spread in the in the water it was just it was a different experience all the way around using these versus the uh, the Ganzai Tambi so um, another exercise I think I'm gonna do if you guys are interested let me know give me a, a thumbs up or give leave me a comment and let me know if you would like to see uh, 
me continue with these these watercolor exercises um, the next one I'm gonna do is I think a practice in washes and then after that I think I'm gonna do the exercise what I was trying to do here was like get a little bit of paint and then and then pull it out you know and fade it out and and I was just getting too much paint on my brush to begin with so that wasn't happening at all um, but if you would like to see me do more watercolor exercises like that again leave me a comment or give me a thumbs up and let me know that you would like to see more of this watercolor journey um, also I'm gonna put a link uh, an I cord right here that shows you how I set up the watercolor palette um, so click on that when you're done watching this and you can see how I got started uh, and actually I'll go ahead and leave you another I card right here that shows you my Jerry's Order Rama haul so you'll be able to see in depth all of the products I'm working with then you'll be able to see how I set up the palette and now you're seeing the color swatches so I'm gonna keep going with the color swatches I'm gonna go ahead and um, do time lapse again set to music so we're going to do, this was the wet, where you saw wet the paper first, and then uh, got a little bit of wet paint on my brush and dropped it into those squares. Now I'm going to work with moist paint, um, but on dry paper, and let's see how that looks. Okay, for the next part of my uh, color swatching exercise, um, I could do this on a separate piece of paper, and uh, which is probably what I should do, and do a full color wheel, but um, I wanted to have these two things together, which I could have made my squares smaller and had more room to make an actual, you know, circle, but what I'm going to do is just a, um, a line of color and you can see here actually it's upside down to you I'm gonna do the warm on one side and the cool on the other and do a color wheel style mixing um, with my three primary colors so for the um, warms um, actually I'm gonna start with the cools. so with the cools the cools are a lens alizarin crimson uh, lemon yellow and thalo blue and so I'm going to get some of the alizarin crimson. Get that a little wetter. And I'm just going to start kind of moving it in that direction. Then I'm going to get into the permanent yellow. Whoa, that was very pink. I think I need some fresh water. So I'm going to put the lemon yellow in the middle. Thalo blue. Alright, now I'm going to 
do the same thing over here on the warm side with the warm primary colors. So this time I'm going to take some cad red. start on this side and then I don't have a, a cad yellow so I'm going to use my permanent gamboge as my warm yellow And now I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and put it on the end. see what you would about expect to happen with your cool primaries you end up with more rainbow colors more the brights um, and then with the warm colors what you end up with is a more muted mix you get more of a, a, a sap green between the ultramarine blue and the permanent gamboge um, you get more of a cad orange between the cad red and the permanent gamboge and I'm not sure what you would call this purple, but it does kind of remind me of a, um, of particularly on this end of a, a red grape, because it does have that bit of a purple undertone to it. But um, this is, I guess, what to me, I'm thinking more earthy colors. You know, this is these to me are the the earthier colors that I would see in nature, and these bright rainbow colors. I guess in nature, but in a different way. I see these as more of, of floral, um, the brights in the floral arenas. Uh, so this was a fun exercise, so let me turn it around so it'll be in the right direction for you. There we go. And you can see the whole thing. So this is my color swatching and color wheel of sorts. Uh, uh, this was a really fun exercise for me. I don't know how fun it, if, if it was that much fun for you guys to watch. But if you enjoyed seeing, uh, if you're enjoying, again, if you're enjoying this watercolor journey process that I'm going through in these watercolor uh, exercises, please give me a thumbs up and, and leave me a comment if you would like for me to continue. I'm going to continue this uh, no matter what, but let me know if you would like for me to continue to film it and bring it to you um, by video. Anyway, and also, um, I do appreciate you guys watching, subscribing, giving me thumbs up, leaving comments. You have no idea what that means to me. Um, I get so excited when I get a new comment come in or I see that there's more views on my videos. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying what you're seeing here. But if you would like to help support me in bringing this content to you, there's going to be an I card right about here. And if you click on that, you can donate. But don't feel like you have to. I just appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching and leaving those comments and, uh, you know, rating the videos. That means the world to me right there. And just know that I appreciate you so much for that. Well, anyway, you guys have a very blessed day. Bye now.